Hi, good day. My name is Reshma Sankar. I'm the Acting Deputy Director of the Regional Administration North Division. I'm representing the Livestock Extension Unit today for a live stream on value-added products in milk preservation. Let's get started. So, What is milk? The biological definition of milk is that it is a nutrient-rich liquid food produced by the mammary glands of mammals. It is a primary source of nutrition for young mammals, including breastfed human infants, before they can digest solid food. The legal definition is for the purposes of marketing and food and drug regulations where each country usually have in their food laws a definition of the minimum quality standards and composition of milk. Please note that cow's milk is legally milk. So if um, there is other milk that is on the market that comes from a different species, such as goat, you need to place goat milk on your label. So why do we preserve milk? Milk is preserved to increase the shelf life. Raw milk is preserved by pasteurization or is made into value-added products, such as cheese, yogurt, butter, and ice cream to further extend the shelf life. Pasteurization takes place once the milk is heated at 70 degrees Celsius for 15 to 30 seconds, and it is quickly cooled down. And as you can see in the photos there, these are some milk products. So dairy products, they are they come in different ranges. You have you can have full fat and low fat dairy foods, and they are good sources of protein, calcium, B vitamins, and vitamin D. Dairy foods that undergo fermentation are lower in lactose and contain bacteria that will benefit digestive health. So a food um, that can be considered in this range would be yogurt and some cheeses. It also improves bone health, especially in children and adolescents, and it promotes bone health and prevent the start of osteoporosis in adults. So we have different forms of milk products. And the form is dependent on the manner in which the milk is processed. Whole milk is usually harvested from the animal and then processed by homogenization to produce full cream milk and then separated into cream where the cream is left or separated into butter and buttermilk. And then you have the solids minus the cream where it will be treated as low fat milk or reconstituted or fermented products such as yogurt or cheese or other products. And then we have liquid milk, which is collected from the farmers and graded based on the butter fat content. And this system is usually dictated by the buyer or the processor. In milk processing, raw milk would be straight from the animal, not having undergone any treatment other than being cooled down and the butter fat content will vary from 3%, sometimes less than 3%, and mo most of the time within the range of 3 to 4%. Pasteurized milk is homogenized and heat treated to eliminate any pathogenic bacteria. Heat treatment includes 60 to 65 degrees Celsius for 30 minutes, or 72 degrees Celsius for 15 seconds. UHT milk, what is this? This is homogenized milk that is heat treated at ultra high temperatures and aseptically packaged, which would be under strict sterile environment that is free from bacteria, viruses, and other microbes. Then you have flavored UHT milk as well. And this is usually partially or totally skimmed milk with added sugar and flavoring with stabilizers and coloring agents. A quick quiz. Your milk has a date printed on it, but what does that mean for you? If you think about it, in some cases, that date may be a sell-by date, which 
means for which which is for the grocery store and then in other cases it may be a best buy date for you the consumer so countries have different laws and regulations that govern what the terminology and dates mean so there's no one universal answer while the meaning of the dates may differ the dairy industry takes many steps to make sure that your milk is safe and of the highest quality as it can be did you know that those steps don't end at the grocery store once you purchase your milk you too can take steps to keep your milk fresh and safe so refrigeration is key in maintaining milk's safety here are a few best practices that will help you keep your milk safe and delicious when you're at the grocery store pick up the milk and other dairy products last so they stay as cool as possible until you get home once you get home, place the milk immediately in the fridge and store it at 40 degrees Fahrenheit or below. Usually in your fridge, it's about four degrees Celsius. So that's a good, good enough um, temperature range. Wait as long as possible to open your milk after you've bought it. As long as it's sealed, it will stay fresh. But if you go over the, the, um, the expiration, it obviously is not gonna stick. Um, be fresh it will start to spoil so while it may be a bit inconvenient store your milk in the back of your fridge while where it is coldest the bottom line though your nose knows if your milk smells funny don't drink it and when in doubt throw it out so some milk products that is found in trinidad um, we have plain liquid milk whole milk low fat milk reduced milk so in terms of whole milk, it's whole milk is full cream milk. Flavored liquid milk, you have many drinks that is made out of the whole milk or the low fat milk. Then we have powdered milk, butter and ghee. And I will expound on what is the difference between butter and ghee. Fermented milk products such as cheese, yogurt, milk drinks. Then we have ice cream and creams. So creams will be like your whipping cream. So what is cheese? Cheese is a, uh, a natural product made from four basic ingredients. That is milk, salt, a good bacteria, and rennet. And rennet is really an enzyme. So from there, cheese makers can adjust the basic recipe by adding other ingredients to make all of the cheeses we know and love. And according to Dean Summer, Cheese and food technologists at the University of Wisconsin Madison Center for Dairy Research. Cheese ripening is a complex process. So that's because there are so many different factors that come into play. And if you want to get in, um, make into cheese making, you you will I will be going down further into ter in terms of the different types of cheeses that we have on our market. So what type of milk can be used in cheese making? The type of milk you use will influence the cheese making process. Cow's milk produces a firm curd and is easy to work with. It produces many different cheeses at the supermarket. Goat's milk produces a whiter and slightly soft cheese because the curd tends to be delicate. Raw milk comes directly from the animal and is filtered and cooled before use. Regardless of what type of milk you have, it must be either pasteurized or raw for the curdling process to take place. So on the market, we have cottage cheese and cottage cheese is a simple fresh cheese curd with a mild flavor and a creamy non-homogeneous texture. The cottage cheese can be made by heating the milk and mixing it with an acid, which causes the curds and the whey to separate. Cream cheese is a natural soft tasting cheese made from cow's milk and cream. It has a subtle sweetness, mild tanginess, and silk smooth, a silky smooth texture. Lactic acid is added to pasteurized milk and cream, which lowers the mixture's pH and causes it to form curds that becomes cream cheese when it is heated and stabilizers are added. Cream cheese does not require aging and is meant to be used relatively quickly. Goat cheese, 
The goat milk curds do not separate in the same manner as cow's milk or whole milk because it produces much smaller curds. In order to improve separation, two acids can be used, lime, lemon, lime or lemon, and vinegar. Then we have cheddar cheese, which is famous in Trinidad. We have the hard, this is a hard cheese, which is one of the most popular on the planet, and its flavors range from mild and buttery when aged a couple months to sharp and biting when aged for years. During the cheddar making process, orange varieties get their color from adding dye derived from the annatto seed, which is a common practice in the Midwest in the States. So while paler versions don't get any natural color additions. And today's artisanal cheddars can be purchased in their cloth or wax rinds and increasingly wrapped in plastic at the grocery store, just like their mass produced cousins. How to store cheese? Remove any plastic wrapping, use cheese paper or aluminum foil. Do not wrap too tightly. Keep it in the vegetable drawer. Hard and semi-hard cheeses may be kept for several weeks. Cottage cheese, ricotta and cream cheese, one to two weeks. It could even go right up to the expiry date, but don't go beyond the expiry date. So if you are interested to make cottage or cream cheese, check our video on Facebook or our YouTube channel on how to do it. What is butter? So butter is a popular dairy product made from cow's milk composed of milk fat that has been separated from other milk components. It has a rich flavor and is widely used as a spread, as well as for cooking and baking. Butter is made by beating the cream, the thickest, fattiest part of milk. As it is beaten, the flat globules begin to stick together, forcing the cream to form a solid mass of milk fat, also known as butter. So ghee originated in India and it is popular in cooking and medicine in countries near India and also in some areas of Africa and the Middle East. In short, ghee is a type of clarified butter from unsalted butter that has been heated to a liquid. During the heating process, the buttermilk solids separate to the bottom of the pan and brown. And traditional butter consists of butter fat, milk solids and water. Additionally, any moisture that was in the butter evaporates out and is skimmed as a foam from the top of the pan. After the heating process is complete, the milk solids are strained away from the liquid, leaving a golden color ghee. Essentially, the milk solid and water are removed, leaving the golden deliciousness of the butter fat. Ghee takes on a nutty flavor because of the brown milk solids that caramelize on the bottom of the pan. So some main differences between ghee and clarified butter. So the initial process of producing ghee and butter is the same. The difference is that ghee is simmered longer than clarified butter. Due to the reason that ghee is heated for a longer duration, ghee tastes nuttier than butter. As ghee is simmered for a longer duration, the water concentration is lower in it than clarified butter. Therefore, ghee has a high smoke point than clarified butter. Ghee was originated in the Indian subcontinent, whereas clarified butter is a product of France. Ghee is essentially available in the local market than clarified butter is. So this is a, a photo showing you the difference between ghee and clarified butter. So on your left hand side is the ghee, which is prepared by heating the butter till all the liquid inside it evaporates and the milk solids settle down and turn dark brown. And on your right is the clarified butter, which is made by simmering the butter only till the milk solids are golden, and then it's left to cool down for a little time. So if you're cooking with ghee, ghee is used for cooking in the same way you would use butter or other oils. Essentially, you can cook or prepare any food with it that requires cooking oil or butter. It works great for frying or sauteing foods because of its ability to tolerate high heat. Ghee will smoke at about 450 degrees Fahrenheit, so you have a lot of heat and wiggle room before burn is a concern. It has a higher tolerance to heat in comparison to butter, 
water starts to smoke at 350 degrees Fahrenheit, that's the smoke point, because the milk solids are removed. So what is yogurt? It's a fermented milk product with essential bacteria for human gut health. It is coagulated exclusively through the natural lactic fermentation of Lactobacillus bulgaris and Streptococcus tomophilus. The addition of these bacteria makes the product standardized and homogenized, ensuring both quality and right quantity of bacteria in the yogurt. Also, more of the good bacteria reach the intestines alive. We have different styles of yogurt. Different styles of yogurt can be true variations in the processing steps. So the type of milk used or the type of bacteria. The set type yogurt is when the yogurt is packaged with the fruit on the bottom of the cup and the yogurt on top. The Swiss type, Swiss style yogurt is when the fruit is blended into the yogurt prior to packaging. And you can see this when you go to the supermarket based on what you will purchase and what you will see at, in the dairy aisle. So interested to make homemade yogurt, you can also check our Facebook video or YouTube channel on this. So what is ice cream? Ice cream is a frozen blend of a sweetened cream mixture and air with added flavorings. There are no added preservatives as ice cream is preserved naturally by freezing through a process called crystallization. Small quantities of stabilizers, flavors, colorings and emulsifiers may also be added to enhance flavor, texture or appearance. Ice cream and frozen yogurt can be stored in the freezer for two to six months. So storage of milk products is highly important to keep it milk safe for human consumption. The period each dairy product stays fresh varies significantly. The following would list the following lists the typical shelf life of dairy products in the refrigerator. Pasteurized whole milk or full cream milk as you would know it, 12 to 14 days. Skim and flavored milks usually have a shorter shelf life. Yogurt, four to six weeks. Hard and semi-hard cheeses. Depending on the type, it may be kept for several weeks to months. Cottage cheese, ricotta and cream cheese, one to two weeks. Butter, which is the salted one, a shelf life of about four weeks, and the unsalted butter has a shelf life of two to three weeks. Ice cream and frozen yogurt, well, I would have mentioned this before, in the freezer, two to six months. Thank you. Any questions? No questions? We'll wait for five, five minutes in case anyone has any questions. Okay. There, well, are there any courses? Is there any hands-on training to make cheese and yogurt? Um, there's no 
current cost to make um, cheese or yogurt, but you can view the video. And if you are interested, based on the demand, we can actually produce that course for you. For what the livestock extension um, services involve is training. And if anyone is interested in certain courses, we can actually um, develop it. And once there is a demand for it, we, we will um, contact you. Just leave your um, contact information in the chat and we will get back to you. Any more questions? I don't see any more questions. OK, so. I would like to thank those of you who came on board to view the live stream. Thank you for your time and have a good day.